Hey folks, the purpose of this video is to communicate just how profound the evidence is that we're going to have a solar micronova. Now, everything that we're going to discuss is actually covered in the playlist already, both in the first video, which is the actual disaster movie, and then in some of the breakout videos. So if you want to dive deeper, if you want to see the actual papers and dive deeper into those yourself, check out the playlist and it'll point you in the right direction. But it can also be useful to have a short summary, and so that's what we're going to do here. You know, most times in science, they are making an educated guess based on one line of evidence to come to a conclusion. But here with the solar micronova, we actually have three. We are going to start with galactic physics, and this is the one where we are actually going to show you the documentation. You might recall, this was the one where they noticed that galactic astrophysics, the observations, has never matched the models and the math. They know that there is the Parker instability, the peaks and the valleys in the magnetic field, the rippling wave of the current sheet, but their math never was able to come up with how this was sustained throughout the galaxy. It should have been quashed, but nevertheless, they do see it here in the Milky Way and everywhere else. So what's the explanation? Where's the gap? Well, here, they filled that gap using supernova. If that energy is injected into the current sheet at different points throughout the galaxy, it is enough to sustain it. But the problem is there aren't enough supernova to do it, and they're so isolated that the current sheet would not at all be homogeneous. However, if you look to super flares and the smaller kinds of nova like micronova, dwarf nova, recurrent nova, or classical nova, you have the same, if not more, energy injected directly into the current sheet. And so, forever in astronomy, the observations has not matched the math. Reality has not matched the models. But if you take into account things like the solar micronova and their much more common occurrence throughout the galaxy, all of a sudden, what we truly see is able to match the models and the math. Second, how do stars actually nova? We know there are two ways. Either you can dump material onto them, or you can have a strong, a profound magnetic kick. Now, these are the two ways that we see it with recurrent nova, some classical nova, dwarf nova, and it just so happens that the galactic current sheet brings both. It is going to dump material in, neutrals, charged particles, gases, and dust, the dust being stuck to it like an electric static duster in your home. It also is the galactic magnetic reversal, and so when you have the galactic current sheet, you have both the extra material being dumped into the solar system and that profound magnetic kick. Third, we have the actual evidence here on Earth. The Nova level isotopes they find can't make those with impactors. And even though impactors are part of the solar micronova process from either the pieces of the ejected shell or asteroids blown out of their current orbits towards the planets, we do also have those Nova level isotopes. And those are seen in microtectites, in bones, in the animals and surge deposits, even in long petrified wood. And so from both a galactic and stellar perspective, we have all of the evidence that these things need to happen. And when we come down here to Earth, this is exactly what we see in terms of the geophysical evidence. Now, to sort of put a cherry on top, we actually do see a lot of this evidence unfolding right now that the next one is underway. It's not just that these things seem to happen every 12,000 years, and it's been about 12,000 years since the last one. It's more than we're right on time. We are seeing the solar chemistry begin to change, especially in the helium component. We are seeing the solar magnetic fields change, specifically the coronal and the polar magnetic fields. We are seeing more dust, more energetic neutral atoms, ENAs, and interstellar pickup ions, IPUs, throughout the solar system, most notably in the interplanetary space and in the upper atmosphere of the sun. We are also seeing planetary changes, indicative that this galactic magnetic reversal is beginning to affect our entire solar system. And so it's not just that we're right on time for another one of those things that satisfies three different lines of evidence, but the evidence that we see now suggests it is ongoing. Anyway, it is good to have that summary. Again, if you need to dive deeper or if you're brand new to the topic, go back and watch the playlist. It's listed right below the video along with a number of other resources. But if you've already taken that in, take a moment to just sit and realize that 
there's virtually nothing in science, certainly not astronomy, that has this many arrows from different directions all pointing at the same thing, which just happens to be our near-term future. I'll see you in the morning for the Daily Show. Be safe, everyone.